Hi, good Tuesday, and welcome back, and thanks for being a part of the program on this next to last day of August. It's also the next to last day of this unbearable heat and humidity. One more day. We can suck it up till, until then, and then it's all over for several days on end and all the way through your Labor Day holiday weekend. Yeah, we're talking about upper 70s and super ultra as low as you can go 80s for several days on end, and no humidity really to speak of thereafter as well. One more day, but we'll still have something to outline, and that is when we do have a chance of some showers before we see the nice mild air as a result of a cold front that's only going to give us, once again, only a slight chance of some showers, but I'll tell you when in just a few moments. Headlines include tonight two major traffic changes. Uh, two traffic pattern changes in McGoffin County. One, a newly opened bridge. Still some work to be done. The other on the Mountain Parkway. An exit has been closed for the foreseeable future. I'll tell you where. Uh, we'll also talk about the power outage that caused a lot of folks to be left in the dark and without any air conditioning for much of the morning and afternoon. Uh, also some other news and information. And Heritage Day, uh, just a major announcement, I guess you could say, in regards to one of the major aspects of the festival. So we'll talk about that and work in some other things about Heritage Day as it kicks off tomorrow night in McGoffin County in just a few moments. As we Before we get to that, however, I want to say we do have a couple of updates, one specifically being from the ARH health care system where federal authorities are still working with the hospital chain to try to find out where the virus came from and what they can do to get rid of it and get all their computers back online and all of their medical facilities. But they have determined at this point that they do not believe that any patient information was compromised as a result of the virus. A portion of their statement reads that they are continuing to work with authorities and computer experts as well to address the problems and restore our systems to operational capacity as quickly as possible. They say that in the meantime, ARH would like to emphasize that we presently have no reason to believe that the protected health information or any financial information of our patients or employees has been accessed. Please be assured that ARH will investigate this fully and will take prompt action to notify and protect patients and employees if it appears that their private information has been accessed. Their hospitals and other locations of care across eastern parts of Kentucky and southern West Virginia do remain open, and their staff is working hard to continue to provide the same level of quality health care to their patients while we recover from this cyber attack. They appreciate the extra efforts of our outstanding workforce and the patience of the people that they serve as well as uh, as we work through the inconvenience of having computer systems out of service. Uh, they also said in closing that keeping the best interest of our patients in mind, ARH continues to regularly assess any critical, critical patients to determine if their condition warrants them being transferred to a, another medical facility for care. But as of right now, still no change in regards to their uh, web-based computer services as all are still offline and still obviously causing them some issues. The trial for Paceville Mayor Bob Porter is still set as scheduled for later next month. There have been several sealed documents that have been filed in just the past few days in the case, but obviously sealed and to which we have no knowledge of. However, we have learned by uh, going over federal records and that it does appear as though Euless Crace, one of the defendants in that case, has now been released from the Federal Medical Center in Lexington where he was being held upon completion of his mental health evaluation. The United States Marshal was notified, directed rather, to notify the Federal Medical Center in Lexington that Crace was to be released to his family and that his family were to transfer him to his home that back on the 22nd day of August, a week ago this past Monday. The trial, though, still ongoing with both defendants still listed as those on the case. Just got this in. I'll take a minute to mention it now, and uh, maybe we can find someone to talk to us a little more about it later. But the Story Patch Productions are back. Johnson County's first and only annual cultural preservation play series that blends education and entertainment into a unique performance inspired by stories told by members of their very our very own community. It's a new play held each year using new stories submitted by the public. If you'd like to submit your story, call the Johnson County Extension Office at 789-9108. Now, there's a chance for you to get creative. They have general performance dates for the public starting September the 9th, the 10th, the 16th, and the 18th. They've also got some special culinary opportunities set as well. That means they're serving dinner as well. Those begin at 11. All shows are held at the Oscar Center located on Route 40. The first show is slated for September the 9th. Check them out on Facebook at uh, The Story Patch and 
the Oscar Center, O-S-C-A-R, and I'll find someone to pass a little more along on that topic, I'm sure, very, very soon. Two major traffic patterns and other headlines beginning next. For high-speed internet starting at 15 meg for all of your gaming, movie, home, and business solutions, or to watch TV, including your favorite local channels, without a contract, with hundreds of channels, and digital and HD quality, and to stay connected 24-7 with friends and family, a direct line to 911, or to give your business the link it needs, choose telephone service you know is always there. Just click on their link on this site to find out how affordable the latest technology and communications can be. Foothills Communications. Both coming from the Middle Fork or Route 30 area, two major traffic pattern changes to alert you to tonight. One, the opening of a bridge, which is long overdue. The project very near completion, but accessible at this hour. The other, an exit ramp, an eastbound exit ramp off the mountain parkway that's going to be shut down for days while construction of the new one is underway. Folks in the Route 30 area started traveling, and I believe, yesterday, and there's still some work to be done, still a final blacktop service to be applied, and still some work going on on scene, but the barrels have been put in place and directing traffic away from the old Route 30 bridge, which has been narrow and damaged for so many years. While without fanfare, it's opened up, that being the new one, to the traveling public. Not certain whether there will be a dedication or not. Of course, there was a great deal of fanfare upon the initial process beginning with the money to be put in place. And then, of course, with the project to begin, as it's all been well-deserved and well-needed for quite some time. And trust me, it is certainly a drastic change. Still, as I said, some finishing to do, some black top to be applied for a completely smooth service surface, but this is a bridge that will long serve and well serve those traveling in the Route 30 area of McGoffin County for years to come, and one that's been overdue for a long, long time. Going to the Mountain Parkway, this one much more significant as far as the traffic pattern change. It was hard to miss the other one. This one will make motorists have to take a detour. The eastbound exit ramp off the Mountain Parkway onto Kentucky Route 30 is going to be closed as of today at 6 o'clock through Monday morning, September the 12th. So nearly two weeks this closure is made is going to be made to allow crews to remove the existing ramp as we have known it since the inception and construction of the Mountain Parkway to build a new one that has already taken great shape. Signs and message boards are going to be put in place to alert travelers of the closure, which means that any eastbound vehicles needing to get on to Route 30 will have to use the Kentucky Route 7 interchange, exit 75, and then re-enter the Mountain Parkway heading west and then exit on to Kentucky 30, making a U-turn of sorts and then coming back to get on Route 30. The Kentucky 30 ramp replacement, of course, one small, even though it's a big part, one small part in the grand scheme of things of the Mountain Parkway expansion project. It's about a 400-mile project, of course, for McGoffin County and Zone Route 30. It's a significant part and will forever change getting on and off the Mountain Parkway, certainly for the good, as it will be a much easier and much more gradual slope and grade to get off of the Mountain Parkway and then on to the Route 30 headed in either direction. And, of course, through the entire construction area with this and other traffic pattern changes, crews are suggesting and emphasizing how important it is that everyone travel a little slower. Speed limits have been reduced in this area for the safety of construction crews and for travelers. So use a little extra caution, give yourself some extra time, and pay a little extra attention because where you are used to traveling for so many years, well, might not be the way that you'll be traveling at any given time as they're continuing to make big strides in progress on the entire project. Some folks experiencing a situation last night, many more today to the tune of about 1,300 customers with AEP. All power, we believe, restored at this hour, but maybe some folks wondering as to why it was out in the first place. Not one but two power outages since I saw you last. The first beginning just after, I guess, we wrapped up the early show last evening. Sometime around 7.30 or so, I'm told that two sycamores that actually fell across some lines on Route 40, just a few miles out of Sagersville, caused a relatively small outage in comparison to this morning's and was repaired by AEP sometime around 10.30 last night.
But bright and early this morning, shortly before 6 o'clock, another outage. This also from a downed tree causing issues. Knocked out power basically for more than 1,000 customers on the AEP grid in McGoffin County. Specifically starting in the downtown area after the McGoffin County Rescue Squad building running east on 114 all the way to the county line on Route 460, new 460 that is, all the way to the county line. All of Burning Fork was out, as was all of Rock House. Anywhere from 1,000 to about 1,300 customers experiencing an outage, some of them lasting well up into the afternoon. There are some closures that are situated near the McGoffin County Rescue Squad building at the junction of Parkway Drive and Route 114. AEP officials are able to use those to divert power and in doing so, we're able to restore power to many of the customers by around 10 o'clock this morning or shortly thereafter. For the McGough County High School, the only school obviously affected in this particular outage, they and several other residences and businesses were without power until about 2 o'clock or a little after this afternoon. The culprit, as I said, another tree that had fallen and caused a major problem on a major power supply line up this hollow, which is just before the substation on Route 40. It took crews several hours to locate the outage and then several hours to get their equipment back up to the remote area and then make the repair. A birthday wish will kick off our community calendar tonight, and this one goes out to a now 66-year-old Ross Allen. Love your sister Barbara, a whole lot of family and a whole lot of friends. Happy 66th birthday to Ross Allen. I'll have someone with us in a few moments to tell us about a significant change with one of the biggest events of the Heritage Day weekend that draws, I guess, the biggest crowd and some other news that will come about about Heritage Day during that interview in just a few seconds right now. And I think I refer to this in the in the piece we've already got put together, too. But out of the many food vendors that are set up, the Sagittarius Free Will Baptist Youth Group is going to have breakfast at the cabins. That's right, Friday and Saturday morning starting at 730, homemade biscuits and gravy and fried apples and fried bologna and sausage six bucks and if you're make, getting hungry as i am well it's understandable friday and saturday 7 30 you can find them down by the cabins also referenced in that interview in just a few moments the big sandy wings has put together a bike show for this saturday beginning at 10 it will be in the old joy global lot now the logan corporation lot and it will go up until about a half an hour before the parade starts and if you participate you can also ride through the parade as they hope that you'll do uh, it's a fundraiser of sorts we believe as well uh raising uh, funds through Big Sandy Wings, $10 to enter, and you can call 434-1856 to find out more. And lastly tonight, turning to funeral service announcements brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. 75-year-old Carl Roger Minix of Old Burning Fork Road passed away this week, survived by sons Terry and Russell and his daughter Angela Carol Minix. Visitation is this evening. It continues all day tomorrow and up until the time of services, which begin Thursday morning at 11, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home Chapel. Burial follows at the Wilmay Cemetery, once again, all in honor of 75-year-old Carl Roger Minix of Sagersville. The opening ceremony tomorrow night at 6, the baby pageant starting afterwards at 6.30, and that will kick off Heritage Day here in McGoffin County, for which we'll be talking more about throughout the week, meeting our Miss Teen and Miss McGoffin County contestants we never get a chance to do so literally, but we'll introduce them to you in one form or fashion, as we usually do in other news from Heritage Day coming throughout the week as well. Tonight, though, even though it's one of the events later on for the weekend, a major change to the one that draws perhaps the biggest crowd or one of the biggest crowds, and that being the parade, which is looking bigger this year than ever before. And fortunately, they also have a bigger than ever before place to organize the entire event with another event actually going on at the same time. Sagersville Mayor Pete Shepard tells us all as he hoped to get this information out to the participating public and everyone who will be viewing the parade as well. I think so. I think we're going to have a, a larger parade this year. We're honoring all the uh, 911, fire departments, police, all that this year. So we asked all them to have a representative in the parade, especially their chiefs and some of their people in it. So we're expecting that to bring a, a lot of more vehicles in and uh, hopefully have a, have a, a I think it will be a huge parade. 
And even though it may be a one-year-only situation, which is a good thing, Logan Corporation, which is still a few weeks away from moving in to the old Joy Global plant, has given the city use of the entire lot on both sides of the fence to host an event and to line up for the parade, meaning some big changes as to what we're accustomed to. Yeah, we're going to change around a little bit. Usually we try to line everybody up on Parkway Drive and, and use different parking lots, but with Logan moving in over here, they've given us permission to open up the gates and put just about everything that's going to be in the parade is going to be on the Joy Global or the Logan International parking lot here, except the Grand Marshals and the uh, Baby Contest, the Little Miss Teen and all that. Their winners are going to line up at the McGoffin County Funeral Home and the Hardin Plaza just because they can get out and get in the shade. Everybody else we're going to put on Joy Global lot or Logan now, the Logan lot. Uh, there's going to be a large contingent of motorcycles that are having uh, some kind of uh, benefit and they're going to be on the lot, but they'll be just in one certain section, and they will be allowed to ride in the parade. But there will be no ATVs or anybody else on motorcycles unless you're affiliated with this uh, fundraiser to be in the parade. The horses also will be here at the mouth of Joy Global in the grass, right across from the nursing home across the road there uh, with the, the driveway that goes between it. We're going to put them in the grass right there. And uh, so everything's going to be in one, one area where we can control it. And we're going to try to get everybody in like the Grand Marshals and the Miss Teen and all them is going to be in one section, of the, and all the floats are going to be in one section, all the fire trucks police are going to be in one section, so then we'll all get everybody in the parade in, in an orderly fashion. Meanwhile, downtown and near the cabins, while there's already a special breakfast deal on our community calendar, there's also well over a dozen food booths already set up with a big turnout from vendors. Oh yeah, we got more this year than I think we've had in a long time. I think Paul said we had 13. Uh, Paul the fire chief, he's the one that takes care of that. Uh, we've got a lot of booths going to be set up in front of the community center on Friday and Saturday. On Friday especially, a lot of the medical organizations, the health department, Hope uh, Medical is going to be there. They're going to be doing free blood pressures, A1Cs for diabetes, and a lot of free services for all the people that want to come out uh, Friday to, to Heritage Days. So basically all the Grand Marshals and all the pageant contestants at the McGoffa County Funeral Home and everyone else goes to Joy Global. Here's taking a look outside right now after the 6 o'clock hour. Floyd County getting on a little shower activity and maybe a few light thunderstorms. Everyone else in the viewing area, not at all. And don't see any right now, at least in the next few hours. There is a slight chance that we might see some, though, as a result of a cold front that's going to give us exactly what most of us have been yearning for, I think. We'll see ultimately, even though we're still at 90 degrees and holding at the studio at this hour, we'll see 67 later tonight, mostly clear and northwest wind, 5 miles per hour, becoming calm during the overnight. For your tomorrow, the last day of August, the last day of the heat for now, 90 degrees, heat indices making it feel much worse than that. But right now, sunny and hot on your Wednesday and dry. You will notice the bottom of your screen on Wednesday's forecast, a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Here's the window right now. That's mainly after 1 o'clock in the morning on Thursday and then for Thursday we've got a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly between 7 and 8 in the morning. It's a pretty narrow window, pretty small chance of some light showers and storms. Partly sunny thereafter on your Thursday and will drop more than 10 degrees for daytime highs at 79 and 59 for your high and low. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is about as good of a Labor Day forecast as I could muster up, as well as Mother Nature and the National Weather Service as well, because we've got 78 sunny and clear on your Friday, 81 sunny and clear on your Saturday, dare I say it, 81 and 59 again on your Sunday, sunny and clear Labor Day. We'll start to work our way up slowly. Mid 80s, 85 maybe on Monday, but still sunny and clear. 85 again, sunny and clear on your Tuesday, and no complaints. That's it for tonight on our radar. Just to name a couple of things a book signing ceremony at the McGuffin County High School, ongoing at this hour. Have a camera there already. The McGuffin County Board of Education has called a special session for tomorrow evening, and a whole lot of other news and information. Original news, real honest local news that you're only going to see here if you join us back each and every weeknight at 6 and 11, of course, on Howard's Cable and on Foothills Communications and on our website, yournewstoday.com. Good night, and thanks for watching.